development is uh, is a very important matter in Africa, and I believe that with, without peace, there can't be uh, development in Africa. And I'm very disturbed with uh, what happened in Libya that is impacting now uh, Mali. So how do you work with, with the country to make sure that there is stability that can allow development? Uh, this is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when you look at the NEPAD framework, one of the sustainable conditions framed by the founding fathers of NEPAD is about peace and security, stating exactly what you are saying, that development cannot happen without peace and security. But let me focus just a little bit on, on the issue of development. The content of the concept of development has changed enormously in the last 15 years. You know, development was a term coined by Truman after the Second World War, and it was seen as a process of catching up, catching up through simple mechanisms. And one of the simple mechanisms which was uh, uh, framed was that finance uh, inserted in a country's plan, if the plan was well designed, was to lead to development. That process is uh, considered today as a false process because development today is an interaction between actors from the local communities, the civil society, the public sector, the private sector. Actors interacting in order to shape a strategy. So it is no longer a top down process, it is a bottom-up process. And this is what we saw in Tunisia. Because in Tunisia had good roads, good ports, good airports, good agricultural production, high literacy rate of girls, highest penetration of IT in Africa. All indicators which are development indicators. And that development system failed because governance and the role of the actors was not taken into account. So development has changed. It is no longer what it used to be. And in order to secure peace and stability, you need to create a process by which all these actors can interact so that they own their development process and it is not imposed top down. And that will lay the way, that will pave the way to uh, stopping external interventions like in Libya, which disturbs a system and brings chaotic situations. In order to avoid these chaotic situations, we need to open in terms of democratization, in terms of empowerment of citizens, in terms of development of uh, uh, freedom of speech. So I fully agree with you. Well, let me first say, before answering to your question, that the African Union is a unique organization on the global scene. And there are many things done by the African Union which are not known enough. We have, for example, an early warning system on issues of peace and security. Whenever you have a military coup in Guinea-Bissau, or somewhere else happening, in the next two to three hours, the early warning system of the African Union starts working on the issue, contacting international partners and deciding on the way forward by liaising with the regional economic communities. So on the issues of peace and security, we have a framework which is an efficient framework. And this is why uh, all the issues related to peace and security are tackled right away, which was not the case 15 or 20 years ago. Now, on the issue of food security, what has to be understood is that the African Union is a, a system of 54 countries. 
And these 54 countries are dispersed in regional economic communities. And the regional economic communities are the building blocks of the regional integration process. It is within the regional economic communities, ECOWAS, ECA, SADEC, COMESA, EAC, that uh, regional strategies in terms of agriculture and food security have to take place. The role of the African Union is to give the frameworks to the regional economic communities so that we can implement them. Our role as Nepal is to provide knowledge at the level of these regional economic communities so that they best design and they best implement. So food security, uh, getting to that specific issue, is very critical in the continent. And we didn't give it any priority uh, during 40 years. And our development partners didn't give food security any priority. Uh, when African governments in the 90s were insisting with the World Bank that agriculture and food security was important, the World Bank was saying, no, it is not important. So we had to reinvindicate the importance of food security and decide to allocate ourselves sufficient domestic resources in order to tackle that issue. But the issue will essentially be tackled by empowering smallholder farmers. And this is the way it is, uh, the way that is taken. And that allows me to go back to the first response I made to your first question. It's the empowerment of actors and the empowerment of citizens that will draw Africa's development. It is not a top-down process. You see, this morning was presented the report on mutual review of development effectiveness. And in that report, there is a very significant figure. Africa has one billion inhabitants. The population of Africans living in countries where aid is more important than domestic revenue is less than 50 million. 50 million Africans live in countries where they depend more on aid, on one billion inhabitants. What does that mean? It means that the improvements in terms of internal resources have been considerable. So we are in a post-ODA period. Africa doesn't count anymore on aid in order to develop itself. It's the diaspora within the structures of the sixth region. Those participate systematically in all the African Union summits. And uh, they take part in the discussions. They know about the frameworks. And we even held with them a summit in Johannesburg uh, this year in order to do an action plan. So this is really moving very well.